Can we start with the injury to Chris Basham? How is he? Have you spoken to him in the last few days? And can you update us on the, the bigger picture with injuries? John Egan, Tom Davis, what are we looking at in terms of timelines on these injuries? Yeah, but well, Bash first and foremost, yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's still in hospital, so he's, he's going crazy inside those four walls. He's had a couple of operations which uh, were needed and necessary, so hopefully we'll... Yeah, he'll be getting home to his family in the next few days. Um, but like I said, they release you when they're ready, don't they? So um, as it stands, he's in the right place. They're, they're monitoring him, making sure everything's OK. And the moment that they're happy for him to go, he'll, um, he'll be back up home with his family. Yeah. And what about the other injuries? Yeah, the other... So, listen, it was a shocking week for us in terms of injuries. So the other two have had operations as well. Yeah, so they're going to be out for a... For a long time until uh, until the back fit. So yeah, yeah I think you, you could see John's in the game. He's jumping for header. Uh, Tom's was yeah. We've got him to a point where he was ready to go and um, yeah, literally the last kick of a ball in training. He's caught the floor and he's hurt his thigh. So yeah, a bad week for us in terms of injuries. You've faced a lot of challenges already <coughs> this season. So how do you deal with this latest? challenge with all these injuries you have to channel the adversity in a positive way yeah listen it's <laughs> yeah it's a nightmare in terms of the injuries and we were because we were behind in terms of squad numbers when we start the season we were, I just felt we were getting to the point we made the signings by the end of the window one or two needed to get up to speed and we were getting there the last international break we got three injuries and then we've just had these three and it sort of put us back to square one if you like so yeah if we're honest it's far from ideal um but we've been here before as you say we've had moments last season beginning of last season where it was similar so it's an opportunity for others um and we have to use that yeah we have to use that um that determination that the boys who are getting the opportunities have to be determined to then stay in the team um i think What's hurting us is, is the length of these injuries. We've still got players out from last season who had big injuries and then we get these more big injuries. That's what's hurting us. And and unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that until January, you know? So, yeah. Now I know the boys are all OK and it's a case of starting their rehab. Um, we can't lose any focus about what has happened. It's all about these next few months until we get into a position where we can do something about it. And next up, Manchester United does a win against United on Saturday night have a transformative effect on your season uh, maybe the feeling about it but it won't it's three points you know I think we know what we're in for this season and, and yeah we're up for that fight we're, we're going to be in our own little league if you like at the bottom that's fine um, unless we can change that around by positive results but so yeah, I think all it does, it, it changes the mood. It's a reward for the effort of the players. Um, yeah, I think that's all it is. We can't look beyond that. But yeah, we'll, we'll be fighting and giving all we can to get those three points and then see what that does. Thank you. Just on uh, just on injuries, whenever the discussion has been about Bash in the last week or so, the supplementary fear is that that might be the end of his time playing is there any news or any indication that he will play football yeah again? listen I think one thing you say about Bash and I bet anyone who's worked with him especially if they've managed him will know how fit he is and naturally that's his gift like he's uh he's blessed blessed with really good uh yeah endurance to come back he's fit as a fiddle that won't take long the surgeons are, are really happy with the work they've done so yeah there's no reason whatsoever I think when we're looking at these injuries, when people have in operations on on serious injuries, it's just the length of time they're out. That's it. But yeah, you know, no one, no one at all is thinking that way, um, especially not Bash. So, yeah, like I said, everything's gone as well as it can. I think with something, an injury of that nature, uh, everyone talks about it. One because of how freakish it is, and and two because of how horrible it looks. Um, but you still get surgery you still get treated the same way off, off them and, and once they're happy with the work it's all about the rehab I know obviously Tim mentioned Egan as well but there's Davis as well who who mm. fell is the is the prognosis with him still months yeah before he's, he plays yeah, yeah yeah he's needed a, an operation as well and yeah he's he's really down he's worked really hard um, yeah he was in a position where he was he was ready to go yeah it's a blow but what can we do about it nothing so 
this is where we have to get tighter together and, and everyone else give that little bit extra to uh, to make sure we don't miss those players because they are big players for us. We can't hide that. The big personalities, big players. Um, but we have to ca uh, carry on regardless. And like I say, everyone needs to step up and, and fill those voids. Um, Baldock, any good news? Yeah, so George is getting closer. Um, yeah, George is getting closer. oz has been back in doing a few days with us this week. Um, yeah, so one or two coming back, which is good. Um, any, any, sorry, to, to, any in relation to to Man U to, to being involved this weekend, or is it still? Yeah, well, I, I would like to think that George maybe not Ozzy. Yeah, listen, we we're low on numbers, so if there's a chance we can get them there, we, even if it's a they're on the bench for the last 10, 15 minutes, if it's not going to harm them, we'll uh, we'll be using them. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah he, like I, said, I think the blow for us has been how long certain people have been out, and yeah. that's something. I, it's listen, it's across the board. You can imagine how frustrated I am with it, and you ask questions, point the finger to get answers, um, because we can't just accept it across the board. And there's a lot of clubs with these injuries, and they're seeing it when they go away. They're international clubs, and because they're asked, they're one or two who are far better off. And imagine the advantage they've got over a club like us who, who are suffering. So. We have to look into it. It's something that um, was discussed in the summer uh, with the board about how can we improve that area, and we and we need to keep looking at it because, like I say, we we would love to be one of those teams who aren't significantly hampered by it. Twofold question then on the back of that then, from Sheffield United's perspective as a, as a club then, what conclusions have you kind of drawn when you've thought about it and. Secondly, I suppose, within the game, those themes, what conclusions yeah. are being drawn? Well, conclusions being drawn in the game is too much football that what the players' bodies are up being asked to, um, to put up with um, ultimately result in a lot more injuries than we used to have. So many more games, so much more travel, uh, and so many more minutes played per game is having a big impact. From our own point of view, we, we found this at the start of last season when we picked up some freak injuries and it meant we were low on numbers. It puts an extra load on the other players. We had that at the start of this season um, again. We thought we'd got to the bottom of it last season. You look at from March, April onwards, our numbers and the health of our group significantly improved. We were on the bottom pitches. We were thinking, is that one box ticked? But we've come back with similar. You know, Like I said, three getting injured the last international break, three more significant ones. We've carried some more longer ones over from last season um, so it's something I don't think you can accept you have to keep looking to get that advantage if, if we were if we were one of the teams here just sat with one or two injuries we'd have a massive advantage over everyone else it, without wishing to sound maybe daft the calendar has obviously changed quite a lot in the last couple of years hasn't it there's the World Cup before that Covid yeah is listen it, it is but then everyone's situation is different so we're in a league now where we're playing less football than last season yeah you know um, we've got a lot of players travelling around the world in international breaks and coming back injured. So has that changed? But where where we as a team are playing less games, in those games the intensity has gone up and the minutes have gone up. Is that a, that could be an issue for us? Um, yeah, if it was that easy, everyone you know, everyone would have the answer. So the logical answer is there's a lot more football played, a lot more travel, a lot more minutes per game. Um, but within that, you have to find a way of yeah limiting those. Those injuries, like I said, we can't like, bash Lowy standing on a sprinkler. Tom, the, the mechanics when he kicked the floor. Um, we've had lots of things, yeah, which have been you would class as bad luck. But we've had others where the length of time players are out. It's not. It's not. Well, it's not fair on players to be putting yourself at that risk. Um, forgive my ignorance on this. What are the kind of rules in if should you want to? And I appreciate this is slightly leading bring somebody in from the academy or a, a free agent type about getting them into the 25-man squad for the rules yeah, like un that? The underage is fine. You can have as many as you want. Into 25-man squads, a little bit different. Listen, I'm asking questions about how certain clubs have managed to sign players when they've got more players than us. Mm. Uh, whether they feature or not, we'll have to wait and see. So, yeah, it's a bit of st it, it is still a bit of a grey area. As much as it's black and white in writing, how that's then applied seems a little bit grey to me. Well, that's football, isn't it? Um, captaincy. What What are your thoughts about that going forward? Listen, we need a, we need uh, eleven captains. Hundred percent. The, the figurehead. Figure yeah, well, that's almost becoming irrelevant to me. I'll, I'll be honest about that. We had we had Eags, so obviously your captain's gone, your vice captain's gone. Um, I almost feel like 
naming one and making it as if it's really important at one no we we need more than that we need more players so yeah it's something that we're speaking about that type of thing and um, we've got natural ones in there got lots of experience in there who's done it before um, but I don't just want it to be seen as the armband and that's all that comes with that role I want a lot more from it so yeah I think there's more to what that looks like Monday to Friday than, than on a Saturday afternoon. A uh, couple of final points from me. What, what's been the kind of key priority throughout the international break away from the treatment table to, to get the players into a, the right mental space to, to go at it again? Yeah, lots of things. So working on how we want to play, how we're going to approach a game, the big one. Trying to make that as clear as possible and then having uh, ways to show the players who have been away that. Um, preparing those players who are coming back who are going to be needed but maybe only for a short you know whatever that time allows because they're not up to speed yet making sure that if and when they're needed that we know exactly how we're going to prepare to use those players that's a big thing um, because we still need to use the full the full five subs if, if possible you know because you know that's been a big standout thing for me and the staff when we've been in games and, and our changes and some of the uh, the weapons that other teams are bringing on or, or money they're bringing on has been yeah, really, really apparent. <clears throat> so we have to get the most out of our changes and so that's been a big thing as well. Uh, just finally then, clearly the match, Manchester United. Um, of the eight matches, won four, lost four. H how formidable a challenge are they this Saturday? Yeah, I think they are because I don't know how much anyone's seen of them but there can be a team that are difficult to live with no matter who they're playing um, so we have to prepare for that and then the flip side of that is I've seen teams thinking they're getting on top and get the better of them and they've got so many players with a little moment of genius and they win the game so yeah it's going to be a game of 9500 minutes concentration needed um, and at the same time trying to uh, impose ourselves as much as possible you know so yeah we have to prepare for um, like I say, for a, for a long game, a tough game, and be completely switched on because regardless how well we're doing, we, we, we've seen it not just this season but last season. They've got so many players who, in uh, one moment, can create an opportunity, score a goal. So. Paul, how do you prepare for Manchester United with the revolving door of players that you're having to deal with at the moment due to various circumstances? the different players they've been putting on the field because they've had injury problems yeah. and obviously pressure that their manager seems to be dealing with as well now. Is it a case more of focus on what Sheffield United do well on the pitch or do you have to cater for, for where their strengths are? Yeah, both. So regardless, you could have a good guess at what the personnel may be and the 11 they may put out, but I think what's easier to prepare for, easier to prepare for is... Um, the style and how they've tried to approach games regardless of who the personnel's been so that's what we'd focus on and then it's around what we're going to do and how we're going to um, prepare for the game what our setup is what it looks like with the ball without the ball so that's been that's been the main focus and do you look on the games against Manchester City Everton here mm. I, know, I know everybody obviously looks with a grimace at what happened against Newcastle but here at Bramall Lane against some of the, the better teams You've been very competitive and speak to Anil Ahmad Hodic earlier today. You felt perhaps you'd been a bit unlucky as well. Yeah, we, we could easily be sitting here with more points with how we've conceded, when we've conceded and likewise uh, moments the other way, how we've not scored in the last few minutes. So we could easily, but I keep saying it, that's the nature of the league. No one's going to give us every, anything. So we have to make sure that we are in the best possible place to seize those moments, you know. Um, whether you take the lead, whether you're staying in the game, you need to make sure you can capitalise on those moments, and uh, yeah, we could we could have had more points, of course we could, but we haven't. So we have to keep making sure that we prepare properly, approach the game in the right way. Um, back to your point, yeah, weather comes to Bramall Lane, we want to try and win the game. Um, yeah, and we could have, we could have easily won one, two, three of those games, but but we haven't. So we have to uh, accept that, understand why we've not and make sure that next time we're in that type of position we can take it.